Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our pathology playlist. In video number one, we talked about cell injury, which is reversible. Then in video number two, we started talking about the most common type of cell injury, which is hypoxia or anoxia. After that, we talked about the causes of hypoxia, which include ischemia, hypoxemia, and hemoglobin abnormalities. Today we'll talk about another classification of hypoxia, which is stagnant hypoxia, also known as hypoperfusion hypoxia. Hypoxemic hypoxia was the definition of hypoxemia, decreased partial pressure of arterial oxygen. And then we have anemic hypoxia, when I have anemia, and cytotoxic or histotoxic hypoxia. Please watch the videos in this pathology playlist in order. What's the difference between cell injury and cell death? Cell injury is reversible, but apoptosis and necrosis are irreversible. This is usually caused by an insult that happened for a minute and then went away. But this happened because the insult was not corrected. For example, hypoxia to my brain for 20 seconds, okay. But for 20 minutes, your brain is toast. We went from injury to death from reversible to irreversible. Causes of cell injury are here and they were discussed in video number one in this pathology playlist. The most common cause of cell injury is hypoxia, of course. Who do I blame? The most common organs to blame are heart and lungs because these are the organs that are normally responsible for providing your body with oxygen. The lung will get the oxygen in and the heart will distribute the oxygen throughout the body. And therefore, when I see a blue baby, born blue, what what do I blame? Well, you blame the lungs, you blame the heart. How can I tell the difference? Give oxygen. If giving oxygen corrected the underlying problem, then it means it was a lung disease. Why? Because you just replaced the lungs function. When you gave oxygen, you said the lung, you know what? Relax, I'm gonna get the oxygen in. But if you give the oxygen and get it in the body, but still the baby is blue, it means there is no distribution. The heart failed to pump all of that lovely oxygen to the tissues of the baby. That's why the baby remained blue. Causes here include cyanotic congenital heart diseases, as we have discussed before. What are these cyanotic congenital heart diseases? Trichospade atresia, tetralogy of fallow, T, a PVR, transposition and truncus, don't you know? Causes of hypoxia include ischemia, hypoxemia, and hemoglobin abnormalities. Pause and review. Define hypoxia inadequate tissue oxygenation. Define anoxia. Not less oxygen, no oxygen. Anytime there is less oxygen or no oxygen, who's gonna suffer? The mitochondria. Who's gonna suffer in the mitochondria? Electron transport chain. Therefore, you cannot make ATP. When your body cannot make energy, you're about to kiss life goodbye. The reversible injury has to be corrected promptly, otherwise cell death can happen. Causes of hypoxia include ischemia, hypoxemia, hemoglobin abnormalities. Blame the blood supply to the tissue, maybe because of a thrombus or an embolus or atherosclerosis. Or blame the partial pressure of arterial oxygen which could be caused by a ventilation defect, a perfusion defect, or a diffusion defect. And also we have hemoglobin abnormalities. Maybe I have anemia, or maybe I have histotoxic hypoxia. I have a toxin that's damaging my hemoglobin. You'll find that today's topic is exactly the same as previous topic. Hypoperfusion or stagnant hypoxia is the same as saying ischemia. Hypoxic or hypoxemic hypoxia is the same as saying hypoxemia. Anemic hypoxia and histotoxic hypoxia together are hemoglobin abnormalities. So if you have watched my previous videos in this pathology playlist, this will make perfect sense to you. Hypoxia could be ischemia, hypoxemia, or hemoglobin anomalies. Ischemia is also known as hypoperfusion hypoxia or stagnant hypoxia. Why are you stagnant? Why are you not perfusing the tissue? Maybe because there is a thrombus right here. What else? An embolus. What else? Hypoperfusion due to shock. What's that? Inadequate tissue perfusion with hypotension. What if the artery itself has a disease? What if it has atherosclerosis or fibromuscular dysplasia? Or what if the vein has a problem? Because if the vein has a problem, the cell will have a problem and will back up the pressure. So here's the vein. 
If the vein has a problem, let's say I have superior mesenteric vein thrombosis. Can this lead to ischemia? Absolutely. Because you'll keep backing up, backing up, backing up, causing the same issue. What are the complications of ischemia? It's a lovely song. Atrophy, infarction, organ dysfunction. Atrophy, infarction, organ dysfunction. Do I see these after myocardial infarction? Of course you do. How about a stroke? Of course you do. Next, we have hypoxemia, aka hypoxemic hypoxia. What's the cause? Remember, here is oxygen in my alveoli. Normally, it should diffuse and go to the pulmonary artery. This is called ventilation, which means bringing the oxygen to the alveoli. And then from here to here is called diffusion, which means to diffuse through the pulmonary interstitium. And then the pulmonary artery should perfuse the lung with enough blood. This is called perfusion. So hypoxemia could be caused by a ventilation defect, a diffusion defect, or a perfusion defect, ventilation defect. Maybe you're not breathing because you are intoxicated with opioids, which inhibit your respiratory center in the medulla, or maybe because you're morbidly obese and you cannot breathe deeply. So you're hypoventilating. Anytime you hypoventilate, of course, oxygen goes down, hypoxemia. But carbon dioxide in the blood goes up, respiratory acidosis, due to hypercapnia. What else? Maybe you're breathing, but there is less oxygen in the air, such as on top of a mountain. Next, diffusion defect. What's going on? This area has pulmonary fibrosis. Oopsie doopsie. Or, I may have loss of elastin in the beautiful alveoli, which means oxygen cannot diffuse. But of course, pulmonary fibrosis is the most typical and classic case. How about decreased perfusion? The most important example is pulmonary embolus. Here is an embolus obstructing this. Even if oxygen diffuses, oxygen will not be able to go anywhere. It's not gonna go to the left atrium of the heart and it's not gonna be distributed to the rest of the body. Can pneumonia cause this? Yeah, maybe because pneumonia is a case of consolidation. All of my alveolar units have been consolidated. They become solid instead of air. Third, hemoglobin abnormalities, and they are divided into anemic hypoxia and histotoxic hypoxia. Anemic hypoxia, I have anemia, regardless of the cause. Could be sickle cell disease, thalassemia, blood loss, etc. Don't forget that blood loss will lead to anemic hypoxia and ischemic hypoxia. Be very careful. Histotoxic hypoxia, what's poisoning your hemoglobin? carbon monoxide poisoning, methemoglobinemia, and sulfhemoglobinemia. How about cyanide poisoning? I put an asterisk here because cyanide is not a poison for the hemoglobin. Cyanide is a mitochondrial poison. The mitochondria of every cell in your body, not in the red blood cell because the red blood cell does not have a mitochondria. So cyanide will cause hypoxia, but I will not call it a hemoglobin disease, while keeping in mind that cyanide can bind to the ferric part of the hemoglobin, which is about 1% of your total hemoglobin. You're trying to say that normally I have met hemoglobin in my body? Yes, it is very little and the body knows how to deal with it by a met hemoglobin reductase. To learn more about CO poisoning, I have a video specifically with this title about cyanide poisoning. I also have a video about that. You can find them in my hematology playlist and a video on methemoglobinemia. Do you have a video on self-hemoglobinemia? Yes, it's part of my toxicology course, which you can download on my website, medicosisperfectsnelis.com. So there you have it. Please pause and review. Would you like to learn about ARDS, cardiac arrhythmias, angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, and hemorrhagic stroke? If so, you can download my emergency medicine high yield course at medicosisperfectsnelis.com. To learn about vulvar cancer, vaginal cancer, cervical cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, breast cancer, etc., Download my obstetrics and gynecology high yields at medicosisperfectsnelis.com. If you do not want to download my videos but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe and hit the bell, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellis, where medicine makes perfect sense.